Good afternoon. I'm very happy to see you all here this afternoon. I would like to introduce the people on stage. First of all, Hava Caravan uh, and Danny Caravan sitting over there. We came here uh, as a part of the exhibition Makom, the Essence of Place, which is uh, showing currently at the ICC and the Market Square. My name is Hagai Segev, I'm one of the curators uh, working on the exhibition, which opened in a very festive occasion just last Friday. On stage with us is also Noah Caravan, Chavaz and Dani's daughter, who will assist with the projection. The, uh, the exhibition uh, here is a very special exhibition since it has begun by the invitation of uh, uh, curator Monica Rodiger from the ICC to exhibit Danny Caravan's works in, uh, for the first time in Krakow and in Poland. And only later did we realize that the uh, chance, or not really a chance, but uh, both uh, Hava Caravan and Danny Caravan have long relations with Poland. Hava was born in Warsaw, and then his parents were uh, born in Lvov. So it, without knowing it, the contact with uh, Poland has become a, a central motif of the exhibition itself. And as part uh, uh, to enforce this uh, connection, we have decided that the background to the exhibition would be a homage to um, Tadej Kanto. And we'll hear about that contact and the very special relationships between Hava and Danny with Tadej Kanto through this afternoon. So Hava, please. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming. Um, I'm sorry, I am not, don't remember very good my Polish, so I shall talk English. I had really a big privilege to meet Mr. Tadeusz Kantor in Florence. This is very strange that I am Israeli, Mr. Kantor is Polish, and we meet in Florence. But this happened, it happens to artists, as you see. And what happened, I came to Florence with my husband, who is a sculptor. And um, I got a phone call telling me, Miss Caravan, we know you talk Polish. There is this theater cricket and Mr. Cantor is looking for an assistant. Oh, I was very happy. And I came to meet Mr. Cantor, and you know him, and who doesn't know him can see him. Very impressive man, tall, black hair, big eyes, very impressive Joe. And we had a nice talk. He explained to me <clears throat> everything he needs from me. I said, okay, 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 everything okay. And then I asked, what will be my working hours? And Mr. Carton, uh, Cantor said, with me, 24 hours. <laughs> I don't know where I may work, when I stop. You must be free 24 hours. So I said, excuse me, I am sorry. I came with my children. I have a family. I, I cannot be free 24 hours. And I was very frustrated and we separated but nobody was angry that what happened. But I took the privilege and I came to the rehearsals 
which have been in a church that the uh, municipality of Florence gave to the cricket for uh, seven months or more to rehearse when they want what they want. It was free for them. And then I could come in the mornings and see the rehearsals. I want to tell you, it was an experience that you never forget. I used to come sometimes to uh, rehearsals with my husband who met set designs and I saw how it works. All the actors, they sit around, they read the text, then they start working, he tells you will come, you will go, and the director sits in the public chair. Nothing like that with Cantor. There is no text. He knows the text. He knows exactly what he wants. And he works on different scenes, not exactly in a chronologic sense. And he knows what he wants to get from them. So sometimes on 10 minutes performance, they could work two or three days and he knew what he wanted, and he was correcting, but he wasn't sitting in the, at the public. He was with them on the stage. Then sometimes it didn't work. He explained, he explained the rehearse, it didn't work. So he used to stop to sit for a while like this. It was silence. Usually in theater, the actors say, maybe I go from here, there, I, what do you think? With Cantor, nobody gives any proposition. Quiet. So I was looking on, and I saw the kind of devotion of the actors I don't think in exist in any other theater. Sometimes some of them were crying, not because they were offended, but because they couldn't give to Cantor what he wanted. So they were so upset. And he used to be close to them and tell them, give them signs, yes, higher, no, silence, go there. And it was a kind of work together that I don't think in exists. I don't know if he has students who continue this way of working. But it was so exciting that I, it was a long time ago and I didn't forget any moment. I remember it all. Then once we were waiting and Mr. Cantor came terribly, terribly angry. And he said, Sukinsini, excuse me, but he said that. They bureaucrats, I have to run after them. It's the world upside down. I, they have to come to me and give me everything I need. Instead I go and I knock on the door and they are busy. What are they doing? They do nothing. And he was so angry, maybe for an hour. Then, okay, over, and he started his work. I can understand it because he is a creator. He creates things. 
And it's so difficult. I can tell you, I live with a creator. It's such a difficult life to create and then to show it to people. It's such a difficult process. And then if somebody doesn't help you, puts difficulties, it makes you crazy. Finally, the Vielopole Vielopole was ready. There was big public coming to it. And this play, I hope you saw it, and if not, I really warmly recommend, because I saw it many times, and every time I am so moved, even I cry sometimes. The Vielopole is a piece that Cantor, being 65, remembered his childhood. He was a child. What happened to him when he was a child? His mother, his father, his aunts, his uncles, his grandmother, and his grandfather, who was a priest. So, the child is not on the stage, but the man is on the stage with the actors going between them. And there is a room, because Cantor makes his set designs, he writes the text, he chooses the music, and he's the director, so he is one, it's a one-man show. So what Cantor remembers? The room. The room is a wooden door that opens and closes, a window, another door, and a little mount of sand with a cross in the room. I think, ah, and there was a bed, iron bed. So there is the whole scene of the family coming in, and it was very funny. It was tragic and funny, because they come in, and Cantor had wonderful actors, and he had twins, identical twins. It was very difficult to know who is who. It was, I think, Jacek and Vacek, and Cantor himself, seldom he made a mistake, and he excused himself. And he used them not for grotesque, but for a life, what is the life of twins, that they are the same, and they want to be different, and there are uncles, and they want to go, but they have to come back, and they are connected. Every person on the stage of the family has his character, as the child remembers. And then, certainly, he misses his mother. So what he does, he puts on the stage the marriage of his mother, Helena Berger, and his father, Marian Cantor, and his grandfather. He marries them. And there is a little scene I brought of the marriage that was on the, on the scene, Maybe it's, you can see it. The, so this is the grandfather with the cross, one of the twins, the other one. He doesn't want. No, but I think we can go directly to the 
Never mind. Um, maybe we later make it. Oh, okay. Is there is there a sound? Can you start from the beginning? No. This is Cantor, the father of Cantor. Soldiers on the sand and the cross. The uncle comes with the bride. Czy masz dobrą, a nie przymuszoną wolę? Tę oto Helenę Berger, którą tu przed sobą widzisz, za małżonkę sobie pojąć. Mam. Mam. Także i ty, Heleno Berger, czy masz dobrą, a nieprzymuszoną wolę tego oto Mariana Kantora, którego tu przed sobą widzisz, za małżonka sobie pojąć? No. Ja, Marian Kantor, Biorę sobie ciebie, Heleno Berger, za małżonkę i ślubuję ci wiarę, uczciwość i posłuszeństwo, a żeś się nie opuszczał do śmierci. Tak mi to pomóż, Panie Boże, że się mógł wstrzymać i wtrącić się w niebie. Ja, Helena Berger, biorę sobie Ciebie, Marianie, za małżonka i ślubuję Ci wiarę, uczciwość i posłuszeństwo, a dziś Cię nie opuszczasz do śmierci. Tak mi dopomóż, Panie Boże, Wszechmogący, w Trójce Święty Jedyny i wszyscy święci.
So you had the idea of the theater. It might look strange to you how they behave, but Cantor says that in a memory, you don't see action, you see action in a different way. This is a memory of people who don't live anymore. So they behave as half alive and half death. But I always am moved how he marries his mother and his father because he certainly was not there when they married. But he wanted to show them again and to remember them again. The family gets in terrible war between them. They scream and they shout. And then one of them says, and Jesus went to Golgotha. So suddenly, Cantor wanted to show that sometimes the family can put one of them on a cross. And this is very, very painful. Then there were a lot of soldiers. The father of Cantor was a soldier. He went to the war, to the first war. He never came back home. He used to come for visits. And he put, he had a lot of friends who used to come home. So I can't remember the soldiers. They used to sing and used to make noise and be very happy. And Cantor told me, you know, when people put a uniform, they immediately feel differently. They behave differently. There was another part when um, the priest there was a problem with the priest and they didn't, there was a big problem. And uh, Cantor wanted to show that the family can be very, very cruel one to the other and also very funny. The two uh, twins, in the middle of all the trouble. So one of them goes, <coughs> and the mother says, I go too. So he goes, then he doesn't go. And they make a little bit fun to let people breathe a little bit in the middle of the spectacle. The last scene of Yellow Pole, oh, there was in the Yellow Pole, close to the priest, there is also a rabbi, and the rabbi sings. And the soldiers come in, and they shoot him. They shoot him. They shoot him. So he stays back, and he sings, and the soldiers shoot him again. It repeats himself, this scene for many times, and then Cantor told me that his um, grandfather priest was a friend with the rabbi of Villopole. And they used to go for walks. And when the priest died, the rabbi with many Jewish people went to the funeral. So they lived together. And Cantor told me that he lived between the synagogue and the church. Certainly, when the spectacle was finished, there was a standing ovation. It finishes with a scene when Cantor 
איך אומרים, מקפל? פולדס, טייבל קלוז, from the table, like, it was like a last supper. He takes it under his arm and he goes away from the scene. And this is the last scene of the Vielopole. Certainly I cannot tell you all what happens there, but I learned a lot of things. In meanwhile, I got uh, I was asked by an Israeli newspaper to be a correspondent of culture for them. And certainly the first man whom I went to interview was Tadeusz Kantor. I have to say he was very nice. He gave me all the time. He liked to talk, to explain, to laugh. Um, and it was really fun. Then he told me many things. First of all, that he said that is very painful for him, the Vielopole, because it's the one piece that is really personally about him. And he says, usually people say, the room of my childhood was full of sun, was beautiful, I was so happy. And Cantor told me, my room of childhood was dark. And I saw my father's boots and I heard my father cursing and I heard my mother cry. Then certainly he told me about all his career. That star, he was, he star, uh, studied in the academy. When he finished the academy, the academy of arts, he was a painter. When he finished the academy, he was invited to teach. So you can imagine Cantor as a teacher. He was a wonderful teacher, surely. But then, in the end of the year, he had to give grades. And he said, excuse me, how can I give grades of talent? This, that it doesn't exist. I cannot give grades. So they told him, in this case, you cannot teach in our academy. Then he said that painting was not enough. He used to make exhibitions, all, but it was not enough. He needed life, and that's how he started theater. He started with being a set designer. Then he told me about all these kinds of theater. The informal theater. It means it's theater that has no form. So you take the language, he told me, I took the language, and I broke the language. So people used to say different noises, nobody could understand, it was very funny. But I couldn't this make the structure of the actors, only of the language, so it didn't work. Then he liked very much the absurd theater. And the absurd, he said, came to the absurd and it was finished. And uh, he liked very much the happening that certainly came somehow from the States. He made the happening in Warsaw. He took 16, 16 postmen and gave them a letter of 16 meters, and they were carrying the letter along the streets of Warsaw and bringing the letter somewhere. Then he went with his group to the sea, and was, he was directing the waves. He wanted the waves to play as he was directing. So the happening ended and he came 
to the theater of death. The first performance he made was the dead class, class Aumarwa, and uh, it is a very difficult spectacle when old people sit on the benches of the school, of school class, and suddenly, if you sit on a bench, you are immediately a student, you are a pupil, and you behave as a, as a pupil, but you are old, so you are old, and you are a child, and all this mixed up, and is, uh, I, I really recommend to see it, it's impossible to tell the story if, of it, but it's extremely interesting. Then uh, he, was, he was invited to Edinburgh, to the Festival of Theatre in 75, and the dead class was a revelation, and immediately he got uh, he got uh, he got fame in the whole world immediately. Immediately, everybody was talking about Cantor. He was invited to many countries. The Classa Morta made more than 1,000, maybe 1,500 performances. And even the talk Polish, it was okay because you really don't have to understand, or you understand anyway. The Vielopole was the second. The Vielopole was very, very personal and private and it was very difficult for him to bring the personal things on stage. He was, his big fame brought him a lot of prizes and he got in 79, he got the Rembrandt Prize. And in his speech, he said to the public, you certainly think that the artist is a hero, a conqueror. But I can tell you, an artist is a man who is not protected and not armed, and he goes from his own will directly to the fight. Because to make a performance and to show it to the public, this is a kind of going to a fight when you are really not armed and not protected. This is really very difficult. Then my last question to Cantor was, no, I had before a question, I said, uh, Mr. Cantor, why you say two times, Vielopole, Vielopole? He said, I'm really, I have such a nostalgia to this place that it is like a cry. And my last question to Mr. Cantor was, Mr. Cantor, what will be after all this death, so much death? And he was thinking, he liked to put his hand on his mouth when he was thinking, and he said, there will be a mythos of birth. It must be a new birth. Mushi bit urodzeni. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Hava, for uh, the beautiful storytelling of uh, your encounters with uh, Tadeusz Kanto. And to complete the scene, I would like now to invite uh, Danny Caravan uh, to, to tell us the story of how he has produced the reconstruction of the, his encounter through the uh, plays of uh, Tadeusz Kanto in his uh, current show at the ICC. Danny, please. Uh, <coughs> I really had a big chance to meet my wife <laughs> when she came to Israel as a pioneer and uh, became a member of the kibbutz that we that we build uh, in um, the independent war in 48, in ceasefire. She came with a group of young, beautiful girls and beautiful young men to our kibbutz. And it was really very helpful because we needed help. The work was very hard. So there she saw me. I was in that time still in the army and coming in the weekend to the kibbutz, and then uh, we became close uh, friends and we married. So uh, this was my great chance, and uh, my, my second, she gave me three gifts, three daughters, so this was the second. But I had many, many chances with her, but one was also the chance that through her I met uh, Kanto. And this was really incredible because I'm coming also from painting, sculpting, like he, to set, set designing for theater and dance. I didn't continue to work with the theater or with the dance company. I went on my own way, another way. But uh, the way he works was very similar with the work which I did and worked with Martha Graham the great uh, dancer and, uh, and uh, choreographer and one of the most important companies in the 20th century. So she also works with props and with the set. It was not set and props and dance and costume. It was all one piece with the music, exactly what Canto, Can, uh, Canto did, uh, but different kind of using the things. So when I saw the, the dead class, the first uh, sh uh, theater work of Cantor, I felt very close to his way of doing, of his concept. I understand completely why he and China and other people came from set designing and decided one day, no, we want to do also the performing. We want to do the theater, not only to make a set for another director that use it not in the right way. So we would like to do it and we, can, we know how to use the set on the stage and the actors and the movement. So this was really kind of meeting with somebody which was very close to me and very different from me. First of all, he was very, very uh, um, um, precise, Daikan. Yes, very, very precise. He knew exactly what he wanted, and he, will, he would not move one millimeter from what he wanted till he will get it. And this is very important. And it's where the same thing I feel, but not with people. I feel with forms with sculptures, and especially done for public, not done for myself or for somebody that will buy it. It's open and public should use it, and it's done by money of public, and therefore it has to be the best of the best. And you never know what will happen. And we never know, you never know what you, now you, okay. Like a singer, yes, you have to sing to the, okay. So they never know what, you, what, what will happen. It means uh, Cantor, in a way, could work, I think, even if it's necessary, one year 
to complete his work. And, but uh, you sometimes have a schedule, a timetable, and you have to finish it. And you have to do the best, because you cannot after, you don't have where to throw it away. And you cannot correct it. What you can do in theater, you can continue and correct. And he was correcting while he was uh, performing. Very strange. A man going on the stage and making signs to the actors. And by that, he creates kind of, like uh, Brecht said, Verfremdung. It means that you are creating something that the people doesn't really go to the drama. But it's not true, because you forget all his things, and he became part of it, and the drama is so strong that the Verfremdung is not working. I don't know if he wants it. So uh, one thing that was very important for me, that uh, Hava, my wife, uh, didn't uh, talk about it, one sentence that she told me, that she heard from him, that he said an artist is always in his life standing in front of a court, the public. He didn't say a court, and said, excuse me, excuse me. I knew, I knew it, but I forgot. I can promise you, and I can really swear to you that I knew, but I forgot. And from the other side of Canto, this is the side of each artist, when uh, one day a telephone ring in our apartment in Florence, which was a beautiful one, looks over the, the, the town, and, uh, and said to me, you know, there are such bureaucrats. If you go to the museum, you will listen also the name, Camerdinghi. I, cannot, I, I, I shouldn't stand and wait till he will answer me. I will not do the, the, the premiere uh, opening night of, of the play of Viola Viola in, in Florence. I will do it either in Edinburgh or in Paris. So I said, in uh, France, we talk in France between us, not English in that time. I don't know why. And I said, uh, uh, it's a pity, it's a dommage. And he said, not for me for Florence. And this was a lesson, a very important lesson. From one side is the feeling of unsureness. A feeling of artists is really quite nothing. And another thing is, I am more than Florence. This was Frank. Thank you, Danny. Uh, I think there is a currently a great opportunity for the public to see, by chance, once again, two exhibitions with, uh, of those two uh, great artists, uh, uh, Tadeusz Kantor at the Krikoteka and uh, Danny Caravan at the ICC. While both exhibitions uh, depict or explain and set the basis for understanding the art of both artists. If you go to the Krikoteka, they have now a, 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 a show of the childhood or childhood uh, um, memories of Cantor and how they affected his uh, later art. And the same you can see also at uh, the ICC, Danny Caravan's show, where we set the uh, basis and analyzed the basis of his uh, um, later art, setting and showing the sand element, the wind element, the concrete element, and the water element, all those basic elements and some others which form the continuation of creation and the development of, of a certain way of uh, uh, creation. And the combination is uh, very interesting to see how the basic elements in Danny's work combine later on into a, a set design, but not f as a set design as Cantor's, because Cantor works in the theater and then he in the uh, in site specific architecture combined with sculpture, but both of them, each in his own way, provides for us, the public, a way f for exhibiting life, a way of describing life and analyzing life, and more so, emotionally feeling life. Cantor uh, chose to deal with life through death, 
while Danny Caravan deals with life through life, for, through providing the public a stage where they can perform, where they can play and act, not as actors, not as professionals, but as ordinary people being part of a community. And I think this is a, a, a really genuine uh, a opportunity to see those two great artists at the same time here in Krakow. And then at this point, if there are any questions, you are open to the public. Okay. <coughs> no, I don't have a question. <laughs> but I want to uh, add something. Uh, I think that, uh, I don't know if you know Jean Cocteau, it's one of the great intellectual in France and also was uh, doing films, uh, surrealistic films and wrote poetry. So uh, uh, he um, said that in the 20th century, four people have been the genius of arts. He started with Slavinsky in music, Picasso in painting sculpture, Charlie Chaplin in film, and Martha Graham in dancing and choreography. He didn't know then um, Cantor, I'm sure. If he will see Cantor, he will add his name as the a fifth name theater and for performing arts. I'm sure about it because as they have been geniuses, he was as well. Thank you very much for coming and enjoy the rest of the festival. <laughs>